I'm about to spill the beans on my latest bike build, the Rinna Scouter road bike, and it's a tale of triumph, perseverance, and of course, financial ruin. But it's beautiful. From navigating the treacherous waters of AliExpress to figuring out how to install rooted cables without losing my sanity, or Johnny's sanity, more to the point, it all added up in more ways than one. So today I'm gonna to share the true cost of this cheap bike build with no penny left unturned. And we will see how heavy or light she actually is. Hopefully she's not an absolute heifer. While the large components like the frame and wheels can really slap your wallet hard, it's surprising how much all the little components can add up. I did get some absolute bargains for this bike though that really helped keep the cost down. Let's start with the wheels because you can spend anywhere from $1,300 to a few hundred dollars depending on how much you have been absorbed into the bike world. Now over time I've realized that wheels are a place that you can save the most and here is how I did. I load up the trusty second-hand website called eBay, you may know it, add my filters and save my search and then I was notified when any new wheels match my search parameters. Then I hunted through the buckled circular chunks of metal to find this absolute gem. A set of DT Swiss R470 DB wheels. But it wasn't just the wheels though. There were these Shimano Icetec rotors included, 28mm GP5000 tyres. And I won this auction for $100 or £81. Can you believe it? Let's add that to the cost tracker which I'll keep updated as we go through the video. Now considering these rotors are $60 or £50 each and the tyres are also $60 or £50 each, not to mention the wheels being around $250 or £200 new, this was a huge bargain, a very very good deal indeed. If you are willing to dig deeper than a mole in a hurry into the depths of eBay, you too can find treasures beyond your wildest dreams, or at least your component here and there. Now, despite my love for the GP5000 tires, this bike is an all road bike. So I wanted something a little chunkier that can give me some grip in all weathers and all road surfaces. I may hop on the odd gravel track when commuting to work. That's why I went for the Panaracer Gravel King 32 mil semi-slick tires. So now I'm gonna be using this bike to commute and I wanted a tire that can handle the lumpy, pothole ridden, glass infused London roads. I've not had a puncture on this tire before and that was when I was riding on gravel. So that should make them a pretty good commuting companion. At $86 or 70 pounds for the pair, they may not be the cheapest, but as any cyclist knows, your connection to the road is priceless. I am gonna be using the rotors that came with the wheels and they are Shimano Icetech rotors. These are the rotors that I would actually choose if I had to buy a pair. Now, being honest, mainly for the looks. There is something about these Icetech rotors that really tickles my fancy. So considering we won them in the auction, that's a savings of around 100 pounds or $120. Win-win. So I have this Zito ZTTO 12 speed 1132 cassette from AliExpress, which cost a whopping £24 or $28 roughly. Now I have no idea on its quality, but our good friend Time is the best test and we will look at this after a few hundred miles to see how it's looking. Hopefully super strong and not a concoction of wonky teeth. I always find buying a saddle a little bit difficult, trying to make sure it's a good fit for my uh, precious area. It's basically a guessing game. I'm yet to get the vernier caliper out and measure my sit bones on camera, although I'm pretty sure YouTube would have a thing or two to say about a video like that. Hashtag wrong website. I see what you did there. So in search of the perfect saddle for my derriere, I did what anyone would do. I made a total guess and went with this EC90 saddle from AliExpress, which looks pretty similar to the Specialized Power Saddle. But who's comparing? Probably the people that specialize, to be honest. Now this cost me $22 or 18 pounds, which isn't too bad compared to the known brands I've seen, where prices are upwards of 100 pounds or $120. For that price, I'd want the damn thing to give me a massage. On to one of the most expensive parts of the build, the group set. Now for this build, I went with the L2 RX 12 speed group set from AliExpress. Now for those of you that don't know, this is the first hydraulic group set from AliExpress. So my ears perked up when I had the chance to install it in one of my machines. Now, despite the anticipated cost being around $200 to $300 or £190 roughly, I actually paid $432 
£351 for this group set, which at the time I wasn't happy about. But in search of ever-evolving YouTube videos and bringing you guys and girls some in-depth reviews, I pressed the buy button. For this pricely sum, I got the following in the package. Two hydraulic shifters, the front and rear calipers, which had the hydraulic hoses attached, the front derailleur and rear derailleur. The rear derailleur can take a max cassette of 1132 tooth. There was also enough screws in the packet to build an IKEA cabinet, which is a good thing. To be honest, $432 or 350 pounds for this group set, is quite expensive for AliExpress standards. And given what I thought it was going to retail for, it was a pretty hard pill to swallow. However, when compared to other group sets, it's not a complete disaster. Now, currently Shimano are selling old 105 group sets, fully complete group sets, I will add, for £450, which is a better deal. But that price isn't gonna last, in my opinion, because it's for old stock only, and only specific items that clearly didn't sell that well. Once the old stock has sold, the new prices will kick in, sending a shiver down the spine of pretty much all our bank accounts. So if L2 can get it right, then I'll happily use them. It's just a shame that the first users are basically guinea pigs. I went with the Senex PR3 crank set, which I also used on my L's for Laugh Pro build. Now this crank set costs $98 or 80 pounds, which is pretty good in today's money. It also looks pretty slick, which is what we really care about after the quality, of course. Now I also brought a SRAM Force flat top chain to complete the group set for 34 pounds or 42 dollars it was the only one available and I like the flat top style although I'm not 100% sure if it's compatible with everything based on comments from the actual build videos so we'll see how we get on and hopefully it doesn't snap well good luck mate the cables weren't too bad on this build as I only needed gear cables again from experience this is one place that you don't want to skimp considering the cables are rooted through the frame so I went with a Jaguar Pro gear cable kit that costs $25 or £20 for the bar tape it's important to keep those soft cycling hands nice and supple as it's a delicate sport I have used prime comfort bar tape for a while now and to be honest it's really good I've used it for thousands of miles and it's still going strong they do have a comfort version and a race version so if you're planning on sprinting up outdoors or jaunting around the local park you're covered this costs 25 dollars or 20 pounds now when buying a frame set it's going to be the biggest expense when building a cheap aliexpress road bike this rinna scouter all road frame set costs a grand total of 979 dollars or 795 pounds which isn't bad considering that includes the frame the bars the seat post the headset bearings and spacers the bottom bracket and the through axles now the all road frame is a fancy way of saying ride it wherever the heck you want and let's be real that's a good quality to have in a bike the ability to tackle different terrain from delicious tarmac to gravel to poor surfaces and that's just one of the many reasons why i built this bike to give me what i'm missing in my life the need for a do it all bike but really who needs an excuse to buy a new bike not me that's for sure now this frame has clearance for 38 millimeter tires which is where the magic of the all road aspects comes in i have a full in-depth video review on this frame set if you want to know all the juicy details so if we add up all the components we have a grand total of 1850 dollars or 1500 great british pounds I'm under no illusion that $1,850 or 1,500 pounds is still a lot of money to spend on a road bike. A direct comparison would be something like the Willier, I think that's how you pronounce it, Rave SLR, which is 4,248 pounds. I know, right? The Cannondale Synapse with the cheapest carbon version being 3,200 pounds or the Canyon CF6 for 1,945 pounds. There are cheaper options with aluminium frames though, don't get me wrong. <laughs> Now click here to see the full in-depth build process by an expert mechanic with 18 years experience. It's a three-part video series. I know, right? How exciting. You'll see the highs and the lows and the troubles we faced getting this bike built. 